we got primary races coming in right now, folks. It will just be another couple of days, and we will have all the results from these six or seven states that are doing uh, all they can to get them rhinos out of there, get all them uh, Democrats off the ticket, whatever needs to be done to um, <clears throat> get our country going in the right direction. And they said it yesterday on CNN. He said the Democrats are not turning out of the polls. Oh, my God. <laughs> I love it. I love it. They said yesterday on CNN, she said, it's looking bad. She said, it looks like the Democrats are not happy with the party and they're not turning out in registration. They're not turning out in early voting and they're not turning out on election day in person either. She says, it's looking like, oh, not good. But I love it. I love it. That's the truth of the matter. Even CNN is saying, oh, we in trouble when it comes to the numbers. I'm glad to see it. I'm glad they see not just the writing on the wall, but get to see it all as it comes down. You know, it's one thing to get to watch a movie, but it's another, get to, uh, another thing to get to see it live. And we are living in a time where we're getting fixing to get to watch these Democrats start losing positions left and right like nobody's business. I can't wait. I'm actually excited about midterms. And I like to see CNN crying about these... Uh, these races not going their way. They're already calling it out in advance. It looks like the Republicans are going to just kick our asses. That's what they're saying right over here on MSDNC and CNN. In the last two days, eight, before these seven primary races even happened, they already had the writing on the wall. They've seen the last five or six races already happen, and they're going, oh, God, this is going to happen in 50 states. I love it. I love it. That's all I can say about it. Now, let me go ahead and get into some news real quick. Just a little bit of bloviated opinion over here. What I think is going to happen, should happen, and will happen. Like I said, they done pooped in the bed. Just a matter of time, and uh, they're going to have to lie in it. That's the way it works. Now, I did see Louisiana officially bans transgender athletes from competing in women's sports. They're doing just what DeSantis did. They're trying to make legislation against uh, John Boy uh, swimming with the girls. I get it. Uh, like Romero Pena said the other day, he says, when you got a five foot nothing woman and you got a six foot eight guy in the same competition, there's nothing fair about it. And that's a fact of the matter. It says, uh, what, men will no longer be competing in women's sports in Louisiana. Uh, and the Democratic governor over there didn't do anything to stop it. So the Democratic governor over there says, mm, better just stay out of this one because he knows that he will be primaried or gone if he pushes this woke crap on his state. The great people of Louisiana do not care about that woke crap, at least 90% of them, and they sure um, don't want to see women lose their rights behind six foot eight men swimmers being able to compete with women. That is just wrong on every level, and not just swimmers, but in so many sports, the women are being robbed of their rights. Women fought a long time to have equal rights, not uh, to only be taken away by some trans crazy. And it's just, it's wrong on every level. I'm glad to see uh, Louisiana, Louisiana standing up and taking care of business. <clears throat> now, here's a good article as well. Let me see if I got time to get to this. It says Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro, 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 sorry about that, cast doubts on Joe Biden's legitimacy just days before a meeting in L.A. Now let me go ahead and get into the article a little bit. I'll read, read as much to you as I can about it. And it says, Brazilian leader, uh, Jair Bolso, Bolso, I can't say his name. Let's call him Jair B. Cast doubts on Joe Biden's legitimacy just days before he travels to the U.S. With a, uh, for a meeting in, in L.A. During Donald Trump's administration, uh, Jerry B. also praised the conduct of American government and signed economic agreements that benefited both countries. However, the relationship between Brazil was weakened after Joe Biden got in office. Uh, he said he doubts the legitimacy of the people picking process for uh, joy bribes, and uh, he said he was one of the was one of the last world leaders to congratulate joy bribes. For his results. I don't think he wanted to do it. The meeting between Biden and and Mr. B, the leader of the two largest democracies in the American hemisphere, will be the first between the two since 
uh, U.S. president took over the White House. I'm going to call him resident, not president. He, he's not legitimate to me neither, just my opinion, just for the way he acts alone. Brazilian president Jair B. on Tuesday cast doubt on the 2020 uh, victory uh, just two days before they were due to meet with the, for the first time during the summit of America. He is an outspoken uh, admirer and former, uh, he's, an out, he's an outspoken admirer of former President Trump and said in a TV interview that he still harbors suspicious about, about the victory and he began to praise and then he began praising Trump's government. Sounds like he knows what time it is. The American people are the ones who talk about what happened and and we'll discuss the sol and I will not discuss the sovereignty of another country, but Trump was doing really well, Bolsonaro said. We don't want this to happen in Brazil like it did in America. Boy, if that doesn't say a lot, nothing does. That's all I got for you on that one, folks. Let me back up here and see if I I'm about out of time here on my phone. I know I've only got about twenty minutes for my phone cuts off on me on my memory. So let me go ahead and uh see if I got one more article I got time to shoot out here for you real quick. DeSantis fights back after Soros Link Media Group targets Hispanic voters. Uh, DeSantis is fighting the good fight each and every day. He's throwing up his hands and ready to go with the knockout punch with legislation, whatever he's got to do. He, sees, he said he sees that the uh, Latin, Latino ne media network and 18 Hispanic radio stations across 10 different U.S. markets are boasting their access to one-third of the Hispanic, Hispanic population. And the network is being funded by Lake Star Finance, a group affiliated with George Soros, of course, and former Hillary for American employees, Jess Morales, uh, Raquetto, and Stephanie Val Valencia, a former Obama staffer. These people are heading up this venture. And basically, this former Latino network and the new network are set up to uh, try to reach. Uh, the Spanish population to try to um, push their agendas. So they bought ads buying and telling the community what's really happening. The parcel reads warning voters. The left is taking control of our media. Billionaire George Soros is known for financing extreme leftist causes is now financing the purchase of Hispanic radio stations right here in Miami. And the purpose is to change the narrative. They do not believe they're going to have the votes to uh, swing anything any any further, um, especially with not getting the Spanish vote. So George Soros has teamed up with Biden supporters to buy the station from Television <clears throat> Univision, <clears throat> and they're coming with their own ideology agenda, as they said, and they warned that uh, Soros and his minions know that this community represents the fight against socialism in America. And so they're coming hard against the uh, against the Spanish with their propaganda, and they're trying to find a way to call them their future choosers. And it is not very working very well because it's Soros funded, and most people know about Soros at this point. Most people are seeing the writing on the wall. People are figuring it out. People are not stupid. But DeSantis, being the fighter that he is, he's calling the stuff.